Here we are again, back on another awesome adventure, going through a dungeon, but something feels kind of weird. We walk over here and we can kind of look over the wall. Uh, it's just not so fun to be able to see in the next room. It's a little bit weird for A Link to the Past especially. If you want to make a good dungeon crawler, then we're going to have to do something about this to make it look a lot more professional and more polished. Today we're going to talk about how to make the game screen work for us and do a really cool room switch every time we move from one room to the next. Let's get started. Today's agenda, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the sensors to make all of this work. Then we're going to show you guys how to move in each of the four cardinal directions. Make sure you stick around for all of them because they require specific numbers in each of the mappings to make them work. And two of the directions require specific nodons. So you'll want to have those and be able to note them down in case you want to make your own level. Without further ado, let's get into it. We are going to be working using the overhead view, so if you haven't already, make sure to hit this box and that it's green. Then you're going to call up a game screen and make it about the same size as the room. In order to get this effect to work, we're going to disconnect our person from the game screen, and we're going to call on a sensor. We need a specifically a touch sensor. So these touch sensors are going to be placed between all of the doorways of the places we want to go, and the next room. Make it as long as the doorway is and kind of put it a little bit before the doorway and then go into the settings of this one and we're going to turn off everything except person. And we also want it to be on touch and not visible. Everything else should be good. Then we're going to go ahead and copy this one and put it on the other side of the doorway as well. This is going to give us a really cool effect. Next we're going to be calling up a flag node on from flag counter random. This is going to just basically change from 0 to 1, tell us whether something is turned on or turned off or activated. So connect the room you're going into to the on hey. port and the room that you're leaving to the off port. Then you can go ahead and just drag it off the screen to make sure it's not too crowded. And we're going to go to convert and map node on. We're going to plug the flag into the map. This is going to tell us how far we need to go. The input range of this 0 to 1 works well with the flag node on, but we need to change the output range from negative 1 to positive 3. So we just need to tell the Z port to do that because we are moving in a Z direction. Make sure your game screen is lined up with your room just like this. And then when you go over the touch sensor and on the other one, it's going to scroll up to the next room just like this. And if you have it correct, it's going to have that effect no matter which way you go, up or down. Now that we have it for going down to up, we're going to need to go from left to right. Let's go ahead and copy a touch sensor and turn it sideways. Alright, so this time let's go ahead and call up the flag node on and remember to connect the room we're going into to the on port, the room we're leaving to the off port. Let's call up the map node on once again, but this time it's going to be a little bit different. So let's connect these two together once again. We're going to keep this at 0, 1. However, this one over here we're going to change to 0 and 6.4. This is going to be how much it moves to the right. Also, we're going to connect this map node on into the game screen here the X port because we're moving in an X direction. So let's go ahead and move into the next room and test this out, see if it's working. Just like that, and when we go back, it should work just fine as well. No problem. Now, you might be wondering what happens if I put these in backwards. Well, let's go ahead and see. All right, we're going to move this one over here, this one over here, and see if it has any change in the effect. So we're gonna go in here, go over here. Whoa, oh! Uh, I'm lost in the space-time continuum. So make sure you guys get those in the correct way, otherwise it's going to throw everything off. This tutorial's not quite over yet though, so don't go anywhere because this will cause great confusion if you don't get this one right. Let's go ahead and take the room we're coming from, put it in the off on this flag, and then the room we're going to, we're going to put in the on as usual. Now what happens if we connect this one going left to the X section? Just like the way we're supposed to, right? Let's see. All right, let's go over here and... Oh no, it went to the right. So we're gonna go ahead and undo that. So the map should stay the same, zero to 6.4. The only thing we need to do is make sure to add an inversion node on. So go to convert, 
and we're going to use inversion. For some reason, the normal map function will not work this way, so plug it into this, and then plug it into the x value when you're headed left. Now let's go up here and see if it works correctly. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Now you think you might have a grasp on what we're doing here. Totally, you just need to do the inversion, but then you try to go from up to down. So let's go ahead and just copy these. Actually, what you need to do is just shift it over a little bit. So we need to change this one to zero and four with the inversion node on attached and it's fixed. It's a little bit different for each direction, and we have to use the inversion nodons for going left and down. And for going down, we have to actually change the amount. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and I will put up on screen the directions and the amounts that you need, just in case you need to reference it again. Until next time, happy building, and God bless.